I'm sorry if I look tired today. I did not sleep at all last night. If you know what I mean. Guys, you know what I mean. Around 11 o'clock, I had a moist, hot little burrito right before I went to bed. All night long, it sounded like a trumpet attached to a leaf blower. In this video, I'm going to explain some of the differences between GMRS and ham radio and some of the differences between the people that might use them, might use one or the other, and why some people might use GMRS and other people might use ham radios. Now, just a disclaimer up front, I am not a ham radio operator. I do not have a ham radio license. The sad hams did a good job of chasing me away while I was thinking about becoming a ham radio operator. So because I'm not a ham radio expert, it is possible that I might say, make some minor mistake and say something wrong or get something wrong. But don't worry, if I get any minor little detail wrong, someone will come along and leave a 10 paragraph book in the comments section explaining everything that I got wrong and the theory behind it and all other stuff that nobody cares about. We appreciate your comments explaining the theory behind everything. It makes you look very, very smart. I'm going to pin your comments to the top so everybody can laugh at that. So let's go over some of the technical differences between ham radio and GMRS radio. They're both very similar. You need a license to transmit on both a GMRS radio and a ham radio. A GMRS radio license you just purchase. If you don't have your GMRS radio license or you're not sure how to get one, there's a link right there. It goes to my website. Step by step tells you how to uh, buy your GMRS radio because the FCC website is a little bit confusing and difficult to maneuver. If you're interested in getting your ham radio license, which we do fully support here, I have nothing against ham radio. It's only the sad hams. Don't slip into the sad ham realm. Check out my hero, my hero, his YouTube channel, Ham Radio Crash Course. Let him know that Randy from the Not a Rubicon sent you. Both GMRS and ham support repeaters. Now, if you don't understand what a repeater is, a repeater is a great way, it's a, it's a device uh, that allows you to talk further from your handheld, well, from any radio, but it's great for using with a handheld or a mobile radio. It basically retransmits your signal. So if you've got a little handheld radio and it's only got a range of a couple of miles, if there's a repeater nearby, and you program your radio to use that repeater, say that repeater is up on a mountain, you can reach that repeater, but you can't reach a guy 20 miles away. Well, that repeater can reach the guy 20 miles away. So you connect to the repeater, it rebroadcasts, it repeats your signal over a much wider area. So repeaters are a great way to get much, much longer range out of your radio. A ham radio operator can configure their repeater any way that they want. Input frequency, output frequency, offset. You know, they, there's, they can do it however they want. On GMRS, all of the repeater configurations are standardized It's and channelized. So it's repeater channel one, repeater channel two. That makes it very, very easy. If you want to use, to use a repeater, if you want to use a repeater, you just put your radio on repeater channel two and you're done. You might have to put a code in to access it. It's also very easy. But you don't have to worry about input frequency, output frequency, uh, whatever. It's very easy. Ham radio, amateur radio has been around for decades, like I think like 100 years, right? This is 2021. I think it's been around since the 1920s or before that. So amateur radio, ham has been around for 100 years. GMRS has been around for a couple of decades, but it really has only gotten popular in just the last few years, really just the last two or three years has it really exploded because ham has been around for decades let's just say a hundred years wait when did ham start leave a somebody that's not a sad ham leave a comment let us know when ham officially got started it's been around a lot longer than gmrs so there are millions and millions and millions of licensed amateur radio operators all over the world gmrs not so much and because of this there are hundreds of thousands maybe millions of ham radio repeaters. It would be difficult to go anywhere in the United States and find a place that's not covered by a ham radio repeater. There it is. The 
country is blanketed. GMRS, not so much. There's not many GMRS repeaters out there because most GMRS operators just, they pick up their radio and they go talk on while they're hiking or whatever and they throw it back in the glove compartment when they're done. They're not thinking about GMRS repeaters. So because there's hundreds of thousands, whatever, so many uh, ham radio repeaters out there, they have really built a great emergency communications infrastructure. When the shit hits the fan, the first thing that's going to stop working is your cell phone. And those ham radio operators, that infrastructure, that is a very important service that their hobby provides. So again, thank you. Thank you, Josh, for helping bring more people into the ham community. Ham radio has a lot of frequencies, a lot of bands, HF, VHF, UHF, more probably that I don't know about and someone will clarify in the comment section below. So millions of frequencies you could talk to or, or use on ham radio. GMRS is limited to one band and really one set of frequencies in the 462 megahertz range. If you're using GMRS, you don't even need to think about megahertz or gigabertz or anything. It's just channels. So on GMRS, there are eight channels and there, because GMRS radios support repeaters, there's eight more repeater channels on repeater capable radios. So at the maximum, GMRS only supports 30 channels. And the, the GMRS is limited to just those channels, channel one, channel two, channel three. A ham radio can slide anywhere between those channels, you can pick any frequency to transmit on. They even have the fancy sideband, which nobody cares about. Unless you're a ham radio operator, then it might be very important to you. So on ham radio, you've just got a lot more places you can talk, a lot more frequencies. GMRS, it's very limited. Now, because GMRS is more simple, if you look at a ham radio, you're almost always gonna see all the buttons and it can be complicated. A GMRS radio can be very simple a very simple interface on off channel up channel down volume now a gmrs radio can have additional buttons like you'll find on a ham but it's not necessary because of this simplicity because gmrs is easier because of the limited channels many sad hams the calling card one of the way to know that you're dealing with a sad ham is that they will call a gmrs radio a toy why would you use a toy when you could use a manly radio like my $600 ham radio. Well, Mr. Sad Ham, let me explain to you. Many people can do everything they want with their $29 or $89 GMRS radio. If I can do everything I want to do on my toy, why on earth would I want to spend $600 to do the same thing? It would seem to me that that would be a stupid thing to do. So next time somebody calls your radio a toy, looks down their nose at you for using a toy. That's how you know you're dealing with a sad ham. It's one of the dead giveaways. GMRS radios have a maximum allowed wattage of 50 watts. Ham radios and different bands can go much higher. It may be, I don't know if it's unlimited. I don't know. I don't care. The point is GMRS is limited to 50 watts. Plenty for most of us normal people. So what kind of people do you find? that gravitate towards ham radio versus using GMRS radio. GMRS is generally for a normal person that just wants to talk to their friend. Maybe they're hiking, maybe they're off-roading, maybe it's a group of people that they wanna to talk to. They wanna pick up a radio, they wanna push the button, they want the guy at the other end to hear what they have to say, and then hopefully that other guy will talk back. They don't wanna to have to take a test to just to be able to talk to their friend. They just wanna turn it on and talk. Many GMRS users, not all of them, but many, have active outdoor lifestyles. Off-roading, hiking, caravanning, camping, whatever. They just need a tool that they can turn on, push the button, and talk to somebody. When they're done with the radio for the day, they turn it off, they throw it back in the glove box, and they're not thinking about it at all. It's just a, a tool that they use, and when they're done with it, they put it away. For many ham operators, the lifestyle is the radio. Now we get it, not all of them. We know everybody is different. I'm talking in generalities. Ham is a lifestyle, it's a hobby. Many ham operators wanna see how far they can talk or how many people they can talk to around the world, how many 
contacts they can make. They want to learn how they can modify their radio with the RF choke and the things to reduce spurious RF output or how they can squeeze every little watt out of the radio or bounce their signal off of the moon. They talk with their friends, their other ham radio friends, about what oscilloscope is best to use when tuning the frequencies on their output, final amplifier, whatever. It's a hobby. It, it, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a tool. It's a way of life. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you choose to do. Some people fix cars. Some people are into computers. Some people are into making YouTube videos. We all have our hobbies. Some ham radio operators only get their license so they, they can talk while they're off-roading. They don't necessarily get into that whole hobby and lifestyle and go down that rabbit hole. But for many, perhaps the majority of ham radio operators, it is a whole that lifestyle thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Now, for many latent ham radio operators that don't realize yet that they're ham radio operators, they might get in, they might get started in GMRS and it acts as a gateway. Maybe they get their GMRS radio, they start talking, they realize it's fun to talk to other people far away, and then they start using repeaters and they want to learn more, and then they move on. Some say they move up to ham radio and it becomes a lifestyle for them. Again, not that there's anything wrong with that. We accept them the way that they are as long as they don't turn into the dreaded sad ham. Let me take a minute to clarify what a sad ham is, because a lot of people many, many, many times say that on my YouTube channel, I bash ham radio operators. I do not bash ham radio operators. I do bash what we call, what normal people call, sad hams. And if I'm bashing sad hams and you feel like I'm bashing you, then you may be a sad ham. You may need to look deep inside at your behavior and the way you're thinking and see if you are a sad ham. The sad ham are the ham op operators that you'll find. You'll find them on online forums, mostly on online forums. You'll see them posting comments in uh, YouTube videos. You'll see them in Facebook groups. You'll see them online. You rarely find a sad ham in person. I don't think I've ever run into a sad ham in the actual real world. They tend to stay in the basement and uh, gravitate toward the internet for some reason. They're the ones that leave the condescending comments uh, for people asking legitimate questions that just want help. A beginner wanting to get into ham is asking questions and the sad ham is the guy that acts as though you're too stupid to get into ham. Oh, did you fail the test? If somebody says, oh, you too dumb to take the test? Did you fail the test? That's a sad ham. They leave those condescending, know-it-all, I'm smarter than thou comments. You'll often find two sad hams getting in arguments online over who's right about some stupid, little, insignificant detail about something that nothing go, nobody cares about. And that can go on for days and weeks trying to prove who's smarter. And really, they just both end up looking like morons. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you seen these guys before? If if you've seen these sad hams online, because many sad hams say, I'm just making this up, it's not true. If you have, I want to know your sad ham story. Leave a comment with your sad ham stories with the sad hams you've run into online so that hopefully some of the sad ham or people working their way towards sad hamage can read it and realize, have some self-realization that they are or may be turning into a sad ham. Maybe we can help put an end to it because they're killing their own hobby by chasing away beginners and people asking legitimate questions. To sum it all up in just a couple of sentences, GMRS is like CB radio. It's for people that just want to talk to somebody. When they're done talking, throw the radio back into the uh, glove compartment or the closet. Ham radio is a way of life. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you have a sad ham story, oh, please leave your sad ham stories. We love reading those. Hopefully some of the sad hams will read those and realize the road they've gone down, the mistakes they've made, the bad choices they've made in their life. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trip.